everyone, my name is Chris Venter and today we're going to talk about getting into cryptocurrency. So a word on security. Um, hackers love cryptocurrency, certainly a lot easier to steal than robbing a bank and people are generally don't take security as uh, serious as they should. And the pseudo anonymity that comes with cryptocurrency means that although you're not anonymous, there are some exchanges in the world that do allow you to sign up without identification. And if a hacker gets your coins, typically they've signed up on one of those exchanges, they will get your Bitcoin into there and then find ways to um, you know transfer your money out and you won't see it again. So it certainly is traceable, but as I say, the anonymity can vary depending on the exchange you signed up. So it's why hackers really love cryptocurrency. If you trade cryptocurrency, you also need to be very vigilant and follow established security protocols. So an easy way to visualize the concept of a Bitcoin wallet and address is to think of it, think of it like a glass safe. So you've got this glass safe and you can see into it. That's the public blockchain and the ledgers there with all the transactions there. However, no one can access your money. It's a glass safe. They can see into it, but without your private key, you can't access the money. So the private key is like your combination to the safe. You access that safe with the private key. And so therefore your private key is the combo to your safe. You don't give that out to anyone. Never give your private key to anyone and do not ever type your private key onto a website. So no matter what the website says, no matter what email you get in your inbox saying, you know, put your private key in here to claim your Bitcoin gold or your Bitcoin cash or anything like that. Do not do it. It's a scam. They will take your private key and they will steal your money. So there's only one place you ever use your keys and that's to access your wallet. And you then send money from your wallet to other exchanges. The other thing is keep your wallet recovery phases secure and backed up. So take a copy, write down the 12 word recovery phase or 16 or 24 word, depending on what physical hardware wallet you use. If you have a software wallet, you're also going to have a recovery phase. Keep those separate, save them somewhere, give them to a parent, give them to a relative, someone you trust so that if you lose your wallet or your iPhone breaks or your physical hardware wallet breaks, you can get your money back. Don't back up these recovery phases on the device you're using it. So if you have a software wallet on your PC, please make sure you do not have a file on your PC called software wallet recovery phrase. I've seen it. I've seen people do that. Um, they have Dropbox accounts with their you know, listed private keys. Do not do stupid things like that. Hackers love that. You're just making it easy for them. The other thing is keep your virus and malware scanning up to date. So if you're using a PC, um, make sure you use a PC that you feel is secure. I do not recommend you trade cryptocurrency on the same PC you let your children play games on. There are lots of really dodgy websites out there that the kids get on. They download malware. Some of that malware is really smart. It can understand a Bitcoin address. You might send money to your wallet and then you want to send it to an exchange. And when you type in the address of the exchange, this malware can identify the Bitcoin address and at the very last second switch the address. And when it switches that address, you hit send, your money's gone. You will never see it again. And that can be done by malware. So your virus scanners need to be up to date to make sure that doesn't happen to you. So as I said, separate your usage. Don't keep your software wallet on your daily use phone or computer or laptop. Have a separate laptop, separate phone, keep the malware up to date, delete everything off there you can and just have that one bit of software that you use and don't connect that device to the internet until you have to. The final word or second final word, don't store large sums of fiat or that is Australian dollars on cryptocurrency exchanges. You saw that list of hacks before, your money can disappear. So please take this seriously. And finally, Use a cold storage wallet if you've got any significant amount of currency or cryptocurrency that you own. Um, it's probably the safest way to store your private keys and allows you to trade far more safely. It's not susceptible to the malware uh, and the type of hacking that can occur if you're on a software uh, version of that. So follow those rules and you should be safe. It's a lot scarier than it seems, but if you just follow those protocols, you're going to be good.